Good morning, I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. It's another cold one today, but at least we have the sun and that should make the coveralls quite toasty for the sheep. And we had no one have lambs last night for the first time in a long time. We don't want them to stop altogether because we don't want to be bunged up again. But it was nice uh, not to have to deal with that last night. So let's go inside and see what today has in store for us. I see Buddy's waiting here to be fed. Hi, Buddy. How you doing? Nice and warm in this room. And Ben, we have to, we're locking him up so that he doesn't run down to the road. Um, he stays with us while we're doing chores, but lately we're having a dispute. Well, we've had a like a 20 year dispute with one of our neighbors and they've decided that they're gonna walk their dog in front of our house every day, which is their right. But Ben runs down and barks at, at her when, when she's doing that and we're afraid he's gonna get hit by a car and she's complaining about Ben being a vicious dog. And as you know, Ben's not a vicious dog. But while we're working, um, we have to keep an eye that he's with us. So just in case she walks by, we have him in the milk house right now. And then he'll follow us off to the coveralls. But it's another worry we have added to our plate. It would be so much easier if they walked the other direction, but I do think they're trying to cause trouble for us. <coughs> and here it is. Hi, you guys. Oh, and there's the mom that's rejecting her lamb. We were gonna, someone asked about us tying her up and stuff. So we were going to show that today. I was going to get Arnie to tie her up and show you how we do it. Uh, the problem with this ewe is when she's busy, she lets the lamb nurse. But she doesn't talk to it. She doesn't love it. And we're concerned that maybe she doesn't really release too much milk. And if we let her... See, she's trying to get the lamb off. So she's tolerating this lamb, but she's not gr learning to accept it. But we'll show you more about what we have done with her and what we think about that. This you here, she had lambs yesterday and she was feeling a bit under the weather. So we gave her some alcohol, not alcohol. <laughs> Arnie walked by, so I thought alcohol. No, um, we gave her some glycol. Uh, just to give her some more energy and she's up chewing her cud so that's a good thing she's looking better and these were the other two little lambs that were born yesterday that were both backwards and they look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed Arnie says before I start that we've got to go see the big guy there he is. Hi, big guy. How you doing? How you doing? Hi. How you doing in here? Oh, and look at that. He's walking to chase the cat. Oh, no. Come on. Sorry. Was that a little scary, honey? There you go. Get up. Oh, see? He got up. Chase the cat, or tried to. Hey, oh, don't scare him. Oh, <laughs> he's such a trooper. He was a big lamb when he was born, so maybe I did hurt him a little bit, eh? But I took him off. But... Well, he's doing good now. Put him back in with his mommy. The other lamb she has in there is no problem. She adopted the other lamb. Do yeah. <laughs> he was so excited to see the cat. <laughs> and he's he's in with his mom now and you can by the time I got the camera on it he stopped, but he even he's nursing now too. 
It's amazing how some of them just pop right back and uh, do really well. Hi. Were you looking for some attention? Hi. Did you have two nice lammies too? I think you're going to go out today because your lambs look lovely. Yeah, we're going to get you out in the group pen. You'll like that. Yeah. And you're so nice. You are so nice. We're thinking of calling uh, her lamb Legolas, as suggested by Sashina. Because at first it seemed like he had no legs. Leg Olas. Anyway, it's the L year, and I thought that was a suitable name for him. So this is a Suffolk pen we've set up at the back of the barn. And these guys will be the next group going over. And we also put Lazarus and his mom in this group. We walked, she, they were in the group way at the front of the barn back there. And we moved this group all the way over here. So there's Lazarus' mom right there walking into the feeder. She just went in. And Lazarus himself is the big guy back there. So he's getting to play with some friends. And mommy is in there eating, rooting in the hay there. We figure she might do better if she goes in the coverall. And Lazarus will for sure. Because then they'll be getting a creep feeder as well and getting creep feed. I gotta clean, I gotta knock down the salt mineral, sweetheart. Would that be okay? You think it would be okay if I go in there? You're a silly girl, I can see that with the hay on your back. Don't move, it's okay. Wouldn't want to bother you any. So this is all we have left in the lambing barn to lamb from the first group. I see some with big udders. This girl here is rosy as well, so I expect she'll be going any day. We got a Texel beside her with a big udder and a Suffolk beside her with a big udder. So we got three there, but then we got two that are quite a ways off. And then this one is standing in front of one with a big udder as well there. This one's got an udder. Uh, this one, I don't see an udder there yet. The white one there with their legs together. These guys all have udders. Oh, here's one looking pretty close as well. And then this one over here, she doesn't look like, oh, actually, this one has had a lamb because she's got writing on her. Can't remember what happened to her. She's got an X. She must have lost her lambs. I can't remember. But she must have had a dead lamb or something. The good thing is that her udder has dried up right away. So that you will get put straight back in with 
the fall moms who had lambs in the fall and she'll join that group for breeding again in March. So I'm heading over to the coveralls right now. I just feed, finished feeding my bottle babies. I haven't shown the bottle babies yet because they're not on a feeder yet because I'm still kind of training them and they're basically all but one are just top ups. So I have to set up my tripod to show you that. But there is a lamb we discovered in the coverall who is looking a little bit thin. So I'm gonna bring a bottle over to see if he needs some extra milk. And uh, so I'm gonna be trying to catch him in here. I just walked in here, so they haven't been fed yet. So the noise starts. Anyway, the guys in the Suffolk group, I'm going to see if I can find them today. Okay, I found them. This is the guy here. He looks okay, just a little thinner. And he's actually got milk on the side of his mouth. So maybe worried over nothing, but I'm going to try catch him anyway. After chasing him around and catching him and offering him the bottle, he didn't take it. So I did my part. I even caught one of the triplets to see if they wanted topping up. But they want nothing to do with it, and they're in really great shape. This morning I had two white lambs from this group that were in my fall lamb group. And normally you think it's because they jump in the feeder, but underneath the feeder here there's a few gaps. And it was a brother and sister, so I'm thinking that they were laying by the gap, and the two of them went through. Hi. You didn't go through. No, you were really well behaved. You stayed with your mom. Yeah. And so I was stuffing some straw into the holes underneath and discovered this guy. I'm hoping he's okay because he's not moving while I'm here. Hi. So either he's not feeling well or he's just a really chill guy. Hi, who are you? You're really nice, it looks like. Oh, I think he was just a chill guy. <laughs> That's good. Hi, you guys. Hi, how you doing in here? So now, oh, Katie's running in the feeder to join us. But uh, this is the oldest group now. They're at the back of the barn. This is from the first 30 ewes that had lambs. And on the other side of this pen is the fall lamb, ewe lambs. So the two escape lambs this morning were in with the fall lambs but I knew that they came from this pen because now we have a divider wall up in the feeder so if they can't if they yeah if they get into the feeder their only option is to jump back in their own pen or make a mistake and jump in the opposite pen they can't go into any of the front pens because there's that wall there they can't get by. So if a lamb is in on the other side here, I know for a fact it belongs in this pen and vice versa, the pen at the front, it's all dorsets. So if I see a white lamb in with the suffix, I know it's from this white lamb group, not this white lamb group. Because again, if it got through that into the feeder and jumped into the wrong pen. There's a wall there preventing it from coming back here and the white sheep getting mixed up. So that helps us. Before we had the wall, if a lamb from one of these groups got over there, it took quite a while to figure out which pen it came from. And we tried writing down all the lambs that went in which pen, but that also was a very time consuming prospect. 
the wall made life so much easier. And like we always say, it's all about finding those simple solutions because there's always a simple solution. Since we're in the eye of the storm today, we're trying to get a lot of these jugs emptied out. So of course that means trimming more use. Sometimes the U gets away on him. But, he, but one thing about Arnie is he never loses his temper. <laughs> Thank God for cameras. Did, do you have the dewormer? Yeah. Okay. So this girl's next out. And you got a really nice lammy. He's really nice. How you doing, buddy? You're going to have fun in the big guy pen. This ewe was in the jog a little bit longer because she had really big nipples and her lambs just weren't figuring out how to suck off them. But if you look at them now, you can barely see them. They're perfect size. Some um, they, some ewes have so much milk that the pressure fills up their nipples and makes them appear bigger than they actually are. And once the lambs start sucking, they go back to normal size. So since her nipples are normal size now, we're going to assume she's good to go. So she's finally going to leave the jug. go. That's all we're going to put in here for now. Right now we got Legolas out with her two lambs. She's going out next and he's just having some exercise with some play buddies. Normally Legolas, Legolas's mom would have been the next to go out because she's 91 but we're skipping her and doing 92 today. Just because we want him to be uh, fully functional before we let him out. But you can see he's walking around now, talking to his mom. She, was, she doesn't know why he's out there with two other ones. So this is the you that doesn't love her lamb. Right now she's letting it nurse. So she's doing better. She never did hate the lamb. Like some moms will smack and really hit the lamb. She's never done that. And if you stand here watching her, she'll let the lamb nurse. But if you walk away, she'll tend to circle around so the lamb can't nurse. And what she's learned is that normally we tie her up with a halter so that she can't move. And she doesn't like that. <laughs> so, so she would rather stand there if we're looking and not have the halter put on her. See, we have the halter right here. Yeah, for the first time on it? Yeah, well, she must be, yeah. You, you're going to mark it. You're going to record that. But I tell you, next year, that won't even show up. Yeah, I know. She is a first-timer. Some people would call that sheep for that reason. No. But the problem is, you see, moms that love their lambs and are nursing them, when the lamb's sucking like that, as we've always told you, the mom should start to chew her cud. And you see that? This mom is not doing that. And the chewing of the cud releases her milk and makes it flow. And she's not releasing the milk. So we're thinking that even though she's letting it nurse, that eventually she's going to dry up and this lamb's going to get nothing. And I may have to relent and try get this lamb on a bottle. Because right now, that lamb's been on her quite a bit. She should be chewing her cud. Can I say something? No. Well, I'm 
might as well get it out there right now. I don't have a good relationship with my mother. But when I tried to bomb with my mother, she lit a cigarette. And we don't get along. <laughs> Same thing. Okay, Arnie. <laughs> she lit a cigarette. And she offered me a cigarette. I like to see how full the other side is. She's always, he's always sucking on one side. Is he? I would like to, I would like to check the other side of it. Why aren't you loving him? He, you got it. She's a beautiful you, and she's got a beautiful you lamb too, right up on her tippy toes and everything. And see, she, I, I'm telling you, I swear to God that she is only letting that lamb do that because we're standing here. She's stressed out, and that's why she's blinking her eyes. That's a sign that they're stressed. Here comes the halter. Okay, so this is how we've been doing it. But to be honest, really, with a you that rejects her lamb, to make your life easy, you probably should just uh, bottle feed the baby. Because it's a way more work doing this, and the chances of success are fairly low. In, yeah, so we're using a sheep halter. It has to be a sheep halter. Cow halters are... They may still be rope, but they're harder. This is The sheep halters are nice and soft, and you can get them from your local livestock supply store. You put it, you tie her up so that her head, she can't move at all. See, she, and she can't lay down either because her head's tied up high, and she can't, struggle and she can't hurt herself strangle herself or anything Suck and, away the and, lamb. and the lamb's going to nurse that and when we put the halter on another thing you have to be careful when you're haltering is these these halters when you pull on them they tighten and on their nose right here there's soft cartilage and if this part of the halter is on there, it can cut off their oxygen supply and it can really hurt them. So you have to make sure that this band is on top of the solid bone there. That way she's not going to get hurt at all, no matter how much she pulls. But sometimes that slides down over the nose area. You don't want that. That's the only thing you have to watch for, to make sure the halter is over that bone. So we're gonna let this lamb nurse for a little while. But what we've found happens in the past is you'll think that she's accepted it and is gonna be okay and you release them into the pen and the mom is like, okay, freedom. I don't want anything to do with you. And because she's in a big pen, the lamb, she, she can run really far and get away from the lamb. Whereas in here, she's kind of stuck. So if you don't want to do this every day for three months, probably it's better to bottle feed it. It's not, it's not all about you, Arnie. It's not about me. Oh, yeah, it's about it me. is. <laughs> Here's Legolas. Arnie just can't stop tormenting him. Hi, buddy. We're gonna we're gonna tag him tomorrow. So look at him. He's following Arnie back. So him walking all the way. <laughs> He, he followed him all the way down there. Quite an improvement over the other days. This is the other ewe that didn't like her lamb. This one seems much better though, because we've never tied her up and the lamb is nursing. But I'm not letting it out yet. You can't see it because suffix are black and you just can't see them. But the only problem with this ewe is is that she never speaks to the lamb like they don't talk back and forth so the fear is that when you release them into a big pen they can't recognize each other so we want to be certain 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 that this lamb stays with her 
because she did try to hit the lamb at first, but she's not anymore, and we don't tie her up, so she has the best chance of success. See, that's the thing that we specialize in. Lisa. Look, he's getting up. Maybe it's going to come nurse and we can see. This is what I like about our lambs. What? They're not racist. <laughs> well, sometimes you think they are because they don't stay together. We teach your lambs not to be racist. Oh, now they're going to see me because I, I have to bottle feed them right now. This is what we call the misfit pen for now. These are the ones I'm watching. They're watching you, right? I know, because it's bottle time. I'm going to put up my tripod so people can see the bottle babies. Bye! No, don't call them. I don't have bottles yet. There they go. Isn't that cute? Oh, I thought you were, I thought you were talking to no. those guys. <laughs> Isn't that a nice little cluster? So as a test, we just took this little guy. Hi, you're lovely. Out of the pen from the other mom who was thinking of rejecting it. And as you see, when you take a, when you take a lamb away from the mom, usually the mom in the jug starts to freak out. But this mom, She's not even looking at us. <laughs> no calls. And this one, this one is calling for it. <laughs> yeah, this one is a real mom. <laughs> okay. But this mom shows, this is the fear, you see. She tolerates it, but she doesn't love it. Well, he's full of milk, you see. Yeah, this <laughs> one is drinking. Here he goes. Oh, she, oh, she spoke. She might, she might just need a little more time. <laughs> There you go, mommy. Maybe. He's just not hungry. Yeah. <laughs> this one has the highest chance of success anyway. Pretty well all these moms have milk, except for one. <laughs> We're just topping them up. No, don't go over and knock my camera over. Hey, you! <laughs> Lammy! Lammy, no! <laughs> she's gonna knock it over, isn't she? Lammy's not too hungry. Well, he's not hungry to hold the bottle. You have to hold him nicely. You can not hold him nicely? No, no, he's not drinking. Or maybe it's a little bit better. Wants to come do this job. <coughs> Volunteers are welcome. <coughs> oh, sweetie. Here. My back. That's the brother of this Suffolk. He doesn't really take a bottle, but he likes to scratch and get attention. Oh, but there is a Suffolk here that needs the whole bottle. Can I give it a go? You can give it a go. Come on. They like to know that you're not just feeding them, but that you care. <laughs> Would you like some? There you go. That goes the same thing when you make them suffer for me. I would like to know if you really actually care about feeding them suffer. It's just not about suffer. Why don't we try the reverse? It would show me that you cared if you even made me suffer once. Me? Once. Once. <laughs> oh, you look like a 44. <laughs> You want to give it a go? So many lammies. 
That one's determined to knock over the camera. I told you that lunch time. We had a big meal. The one under the feeder, I gotta get him because he's not a top up. The beans don't act like real hungry animals. Y'all? Mm. Mm. Lammy, wakey, wakey. Hey, move, Mom. You're in the camera. You're in the camera. There you go. I'm done. Well, that's someone else's engine. Come on, buddy. What's with the that guy I see has a personality? All these guys are looking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know something, Lynn? It's more about the tension here. Oh, look at this one here. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, yeah, that little fifth You have to catch him. Oh, mommy. Are they? What? Shit. I didn't like to write it in camera. A selfie, like. Hi, buddy. Hi. We can see you climbing up there. Pretty clever. Pretty clever. I don't see any of the hands really not. These hands must be getting some milk for the mother. Yeah, they all have mums with milk. Except this one that I have is the worst. We're done now. <laughs> Well, let's get up, then. Press the, press the button. Yeah. Is that the front? Yeah. So as the sun starts to go down and the rams are patiently waiting for their supper, I'm going to thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.